Hey, this is Jody with another weekly video. Let's get to it. We're going to pad some beads today. This is like the second or third thing that you do when you're in welding school. You, you create a pad of beads, which means you overlay one bead halfway on top of another and overlay another bead halfway on top of that one until you're pretty much sick of it. But that is the best practice you can get. The reason is that there's very little prep time, there's no beveling, there's no fitting up and all that kind of stuff except for tacking these three pieces together. It's all about seat time. The time spent will be time welding and it's arc time. And you need to do it with intention also. You need to think about what you're doing and the goal is to get to run a, a good uniform bead where it's almost second nature and to also build in a little muscle memory into this whip and pause technique where it's second nature. So the first thing is I'm using uh, two by eight inch pieces here, so I'm going to tack three of them together. You don't have to do that, but that's most schools will have practice pieces like this, and uh, and so it's just as easy to tack them together than it is to find a piece of metal that's the right size. So getting those three tacked and a little extra build up on the tack so they don't pop loose while I'm welding them. I'm going to run the first bead right along the bottom edge. And that's to, to get a straight line started, and it's a good idea to try to get started off on the right foot. Now, every couple of beads, you, this is part of the equation, is a bucket of water. Now, that's bad practice in general to get in the habit of doing, but again, we want to we build arc time in here and not uh, cooling off time. Now, this is a 6013 rod. A lot of schools start people off with 6013. That's the way I started off. Some schools now have started just ditching the 6013 and going right to 6010. And I think that's a pretty good idea. See, 6013 is, is oftentimes started because it it's easy to start the arc and it, the slag comes off pretty easy like this, but you just hardly ever use a 6013 on a commercial job after you get out of welding school. You use a 6010. And this is a whip and pause technique, and the reason you want to learn that is because that's what's used on open butt joints like this. You get a little keyhole going, and see the technique is pretty much the same, whip and pause. So you get that ingrained into your, your uh, motor skills, and that's a benefit. So I'm kind of for using the pad of bead using 60, 6010 instead of 60, 6013. You could also use 6011, almost the same. So after a dunk in the water, uh, the, the slag comes off much easier also, and then it, of course it makes the thing more manageable and makes it weld like it's supposed to weld instead of like it welds you know, 20 or 30 amps hotter when it's getting really, really hot. Just practice the whip and pause technique, trying to overlap each previous bead by halfway, and that's what will give you the, the nicest appearance when you're done. And also, even uh, even changing directions and even changing hands if, if it doesn't slow you down too much, if it's not too awkward. Uh, is a good idea. At least change directions. Go right to left, go left to right. You know, every beat or two, change directions. That makes you look at the puddle a little bit different way, and you will have to change directions on the job. You will not always be able to weld right to left or left to right. Trust me on that one. So once again, the whip and pause motion is kind of a two-step forward, one-step back type thing. You come out of the puddle about two electrode diameters and back back one. Thereabouts, there's a, little, there's, there's a lot of leeway there. But if you come out too far and then not back far enough, you're going to have really wide ripples, really scalloped and everything, and it's not very practical. And if you hardly whip and pause at all, then it's almost like just dragging the thing, um, which is not necessarily wrong. It's just uh, that's not what you're going. That's not the skill you need to build for running an open butt root pass, and that's kind of what we're all about here. Is is this the only reason for doing this? Is to to be able to weld an open butt root pass. So I'm going right to left here, swapping directions every. Every, every couple of beads, sometimes every bead, swapping hands occasionally. And, and you know, I've been welding for a while, and when I, when I put the stinger in my left hand, it doesn't exactly feel quite the same as the right. But even though it feels awkward at first, after a bead or two, it starts feeling a little bit better and a little bit better. And so, you know, it's, it, it definitely makes you think more about what you're doing when you swap hands. Another quick dunk in the bucket in the firehouse pickle bucket. And we're getting about halfway done here. And... Uh, you know, I, I am already, <laughs> I, I, I can say I'm not sorry I did this. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering some things that I forgot that I knew and, uh, you know, out of practice on 6010. So it's, it's some of it I've, I've felt coming back to me on this. It's been a while. It is a good exercise. So if you're, if you're in school and you're doing this and you're getting sick of running beads, don't, don't get sick of it. Pay attention to every bead, inspect every bead. If the ripples are too, fi are too widely spaced, tighten it up a little bit. If they're too tight, loosen it up. Come out of the, try different stuff. You know, come a little bit farther on the whip and pause. Try a little bit different amperage. You know, go down maybe to, 
as low as 80 amps and up up as high as 95 or, or 100 and, and see what happens. I'm not using much of a whip and pause here because this is kind of what you do on a root pass. You generally don't whip out of that puddle very far on a root pass unless you start really getting in trouble on the keyhole and you're trying to cool it off and by that time you're you're kind of you know you're you're in trouble usually if that happens again you want to you know clean the slag off between each time don't get carried away trying to get every teeny teeny piece of slag out of there it for this exercise it's just not necessary you want it you want it good and clean but you're going to have a few dots of slag in there and it's not going to hurt a thing as far as running over that thing with another pass and getting back in that arc. Now I'm using Lincoln uh, 5P Plus rods here, which are designed for open butt. They're not really as good for doing stuff like this, but you might as well use what you're going to use for, for open butt. And again, you can use a 6011 and BuzzBox for this exercise and still get a lot of the benefit out of it, but this is primarily for welding school students um, to kind of help them along on this exercise and get through it. And one more tip, if you're doing this exercise, you're in welding school, get in the habit of not doing this. Chip and hammer has got two ends on it, but pecking, it, it is a chip and hammer, not a chicken hammer. All right, so it's much better to weld a bead that a slag will come off raking the sharp corner of, of this end on it rather than whacking it with the, uh, with the other end and putting all kind of little dings and divots all around the weld metal. All right, well, that is it for this week. Remember to go check out the forum at forum.weldingtipsandtricks.com and stay tuned for that uh, open butt root video. I am working on it. It's coming along, but it's, it's kind of hard to shoot, so it's taking me a while. But stay tuned for that. It's coming soon.